All right. So we need to take our test. What I want you to think about is taking your test like a machine. And what I mean by taking your test like a machine is I want you to have a algorithmic approach to how you are answering your questions on a test. Okay. Because the best way I can, the best way I can relate taking a test like a machine is thinking about a function. And yes, I'm a math teacher. So obviously, you know, function is just like a machine, right? When we teach the idea of a function, a lot of times we like show the relationship of like a machine, whatever you put into it, right? You're going to get something out. All right. Now, just thinking about a machine and we want to talk about like a well, you know, a well, fast, well operated machine. Think about your body. Think about your brain as a well, you know, oiled machine or whatever else. So we want that machine to operate as efficiently as possible. We have to be very conscious of what we're putting into a machine, right? To get the best absolute result. Now, obviously we're going to talk about studying and stuff like that. That's for the other videos, which I've talked to, you know, a lot about in previous videos on how to prepare for your math test or a math exam. Like what are the techniques? What are the strategies to do? But now it's test day. All right. And regardless of what you've done, I think if you follow these tips of these tips for taking your test, like a machine, you can improve your efficiency. All right. And the first one is going to obviously start with like the day of the test, right? You have to make sure that day of the test that you are in your optimal, um, optimal frame of frame of mind, right? So that means like the night before you were not trying to cram, you're not staying up late, you know, trying to like shove as much stuff into your brain as possible, right? It should be a relaxing day. Hopefully you've already done all the studying up to that point, but you know, it should be something that is you got a good night's sleep. You have a, you waking up early in the morning, you know, maybe get some exercise, get moving. You've had some good food. Um, we want your brain to be op working at an optimal strength. And I understand sometimes when you're taking exams, you have multiple things that are going on. You have a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. But we need to understand when we're taking a test, if we have poor sleep or if we ate, you know, foods that are, you know, not going to give our brain like good energy, like that's working against us. If we have stress and anxiety, those are all going to like hinder our ability to be able to, you know, work opt or think optimally on our test. I think one of the best things we can do because you can't always do everything, right? I mean, obviously you're going to want to, you know, everybody has different diet restrictions and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, try to make sure that if anything, just try to stay away from, like, just make sure you're eating whatever good, healthy food you can think of. Try to get as much sleep as possible. But I think one thing that I would probably also recommend is give your brain some time to rest and relax. Now, obviously that comes with sleep, but also comes in, I think, with doing some meditation, doing some thinking. When you are taking your test, right? What happens when a machine overheats? right? It, it, or if you're working constantly or hard, right? It's, you're going to overheat, right? You got to put like the oil in that machine to like make sure it's running properly. I think a couple of things you can do, think about your brain as a machine. If you start to feel overheated, if you start to feel overwhelmed, if you start to feel like your brain is, you know, like wants to shut off because like the test is just taking so much of your brain power, stop, close your eyes and just relax. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a 30 second or a 45 second break, you know, obviously depending on how timed your test is, and just give your brain a little bit of rest and relaxation, right? If you've ever been driving in a car, and I used to have this, I remember it was like one of my first cars, I had like a crack in the radiator. And so it was always this game of like, how long could I go before my car started to overheat? And literally what I would drive, literally do would like drive from like gas station to gas station, like and buy gallons of water to pour it into my radiator just so I could make it to like the next stop. It was not a very fun game to play, but I try to think about that sometimes like when you're taking a test. I think sometimes students will just, they try to like power through it and they try to like to finish the test as fast as possible. Like slow down, it's okay. Give your brain some time to rest and relax, okay? So don't overheat your machine. It is the most important thing you have, and especially on test day, we wanna make sure that we're moving ahead, not burning out and crashing, all right? Now, next, 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 now the next thing I want you to think about when you're approaching something like a machine, when you're taking your test, you take a math test. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that students make is they get a math test and they immediately start doing question number one. Why would you do question number one right off the bat? Here's a couple of things that you missed. If you go ahead and do question number one right off the bat, here's some things that you didn't do. One, you didn't assess it, what problems you know how to do right, right? Or what problems are the easiest problems? What are the most difficult problems? What problems do you want to avoid, right? You also didn't assess like how long this test was going to take you. As I mentioned, like, you know, you might have to like that crash and burn. Well, what if you have like, I don't know, a 40, 40 problem, you know, question or 40 problem test, right? And, you know, you only have 60 minutes. That's not a lot of problems per, you know, per question, right? So you're going to need to like breeze. Uh, you're going to need to work really, really fast and really, really efficiently. If you're spending too much time on a problem, you need to know when to move on to the next problem. 
Um, now, obviously, a lot of tests, you're going to know how many problems there are, so you can do a little bit of mental math there. I think importantly for like the AP, like AP exam or anything that has like FRQs or like word problems, like scan those problems. See if you know how to approach them immediately. So you're like, okay, I, I you know, this one is going to take a lot longer than this one. Like I know exactly, you know, what to do or like how to approach that problem. But I think it's a really good, good idea before you, you know, before you get going into something to, to review all the problems. And one thing you know, I always talk about this, I've talked about it in many videos, like when you, before you take a test, always scan for. And what I always like to do is just kind of rank the problems like the easiest, the medium, and the most difficult. And I always do the easiest problems first, because I always kind of think about that as like priming the pump, right? You're just getting your brain moving. You're getting a little bit, building a little bit of that confidence. You're remembering some of those things. Cause especially if you've had a, like a long study time or anything like that, like it can be overwhelming to remember all of that content that you had for that on the test. So if you kind of like knock off those little easier problems, um, one, like that kind of, you know, one ensures that you're going to at least get the problems you know how to do correct, or at least you completed them. Um, and then two, I just think it like helps prepare you for those difficult problems that maybe are going to evolve like multiple, multiple, like pieces of content that you're going to need to remember. The other thing, which is like the cardinal, you know, issue that I always have with students is they always start with like question number one first. Right. And let's say they then then they don't have enough time. And like question 40 through 50 on their test, they leave blank or they Christmas tree it, right? Because they didn't have enough time. And how do you know if question, if you didn't review your test, if you didn't look ahead of your test before you took it, maybe question 40 through 50 were actually really, really easy, right? But if you ran out of time because you were spending so much time on problems that were taking way too long that probably you didn't know how to do anyways, or, you know, you had a very less, uh, very, or less likelihood of getting them right, then you just wasted, you know, some opportunity to be able to, um, you just wasted some opportunity on those questions 40 through 50. So make sure that you do those problems first. And I think it's really important that, you know, as a machine that we are kind of scanning all the information, right? Because remember, it's all about that input output effect, right? When you are taking your test, you want to be able to acquire all as much information as possible. So scan the test, look at the types of questions, look at, you know, look at the problems that are easiest, that are hardest, look at the free response questions, like plan out your time. So therefore you can work most efficiently. Because again, I'm saying this on purpose. I want you to be thinking about taking your test efficiently, right? The first one was taking the time, taking those breaks. Number two was like assessing all the information, knowing where you're going to, you know, start and what problems you're going to do first and which problems you're going to do last. And the third thing gets just a little bit more granular, but again, it goes into that taking your test like a machine, taking all the information. When you are reading a problem, here's one of the biggest mistakes that students will do, because again, I think that they... And, and I'm guilty of this as well, but they will read a problem. They're like, oh, I know how to do this. And then they'll immediately do the work in their head, answer the question, and then move on to the next one, right? They don't take themselves to pause. And I think we've all been through this problem, right? You know, maybe you've seen like those questions and they're very good, like on SAT questions, the AP has very good questions like this. They're just good math questions. And a lot of times like you might think, oh, this is what I need to do. But once you actually read the question, you realize that maybe your first like thought about the question was actually kind of like a, I wouldn't say like a little, tr they were trying to trick you. Sometimes they are, but a lot of times it's like, it's just, it's an added word or an added form or anything like to push you kind of like in one direction. But if you're not careful, then you could actually not even do what the problem is asking. Right? So read the problem carefully. Okay. Um, and also make sure you're showing your work. So uh, obviously there's some problems that you can do quickly in your head and you're good. And obviously some students are better at doing math in their head than not. Right. But I think one of the important thing is, is you can, if you can at least show your work when you have time to go back through your test, um, then you can go ahead and identify like, Oh, did I do my work correctly? Like if you did everything in your head, it's very hard to check your work, right? It's very hard to be able to make sure that you got the problem. Right. And again, good math questions or good math tests will have problems where you could have done it incorrectly in your head, or you could have done like the biggest, like the, the most common mistake in your head. And that answer will show up as an answer choice. And that's a, that's kind of like that, um, that, uh, that's easy to fall for because like you made the mistake, but you see the answer choice and you're like, Oh, it has to be that one. Or you see an answer choice that's very close to it. And you're like, Oh, that has to be the answer. Right. And then you go and choose it. And then you get it wrong. And you're like, Oh, I already, I know I got that answer. Right. And then you don't go back and check it. So when you are looking at a question on a problem, what I want you to do is look at the question, read the question, read it carefully, read it all the way through. 
right? And try to just don't always jump to your assumptions, but just to make sure, like double check yourself, like read it. They're like, oh, here's my assumption. But then just cross check yourself one more time. Like make sure like, all right, am I hundred percent correct? Like that is the correct assumption. Like, was there anything tricky or any way that, you know, this problem could have like actually meant for me to do something different, right? Because again, that's where a lot of students, or at least for me, all right? And maybe I'm just speaking from my personal experience. That's where I used to make a lot of those mistakes. But a machine, right, we're systematic, okay? So we're gonna read that question all the way through. We're going to extract all the information. And this is also very important for like word problems or those FRQs, like extract all the formulas, extract all the information that you have. Um, you can also do a brain dump, like write down all the information that you know about the problem, right? If it's talking about like quadratics or, you know, um, derivatives, like write down everything that you know, write down, write down on, on that, uh, on the test or on the piece of sheet of paper, right? And then once you have all the necessary information, look at the answers. If it's in a multiple choice question, right? Try to see like if sometimes you can extract, um, so the, the, um, the method or the process that you're going to do to be able to solve a certain question problem. Sometimes you can identify um, questions that are definitely cannot be the answer, right. Or just kind of like throwaway answers. And, and then once you have all the information, then go ahead and attack it. But it's very, very important to, I think, not just rush into doing the problem, right. Do try and do it in your head and then kind of move on, right. To get this test done as fast as possible, because I get it. I know taking a test guys, it can, especially in math test, it can be boring. <laughs> and actually my, my daughter the other day, she, she, she does pretty good. I mean, she's in kindergarten. So it's not like it's uh, she's, you know, she basically adding numbers under 10, you know, or under 20 and stuff like that. But again, like uh, one thing she started itching me, she was, she was kind of like mocking me because she knows I teach, you know, teach math, but she was like kind of saying like math is boring, math is boring. And, and like, I get it. Like, I know a lot of those the fundamentals that we, you know, are practiced with there cannot be very exciting. And to take in a math test is not very exciting for a lot of people, even myself, even though I do math every single day, like taking a math test, like is not that exciting, but I don't want you to just feel like, Oh, I'm just going to do it as quick as fast as possible to get over it. If there's anything guys, slow down, take your time, right? The better inputs you put in to your machine, to your function, to your body, to your brain, the better outputs you're going to get out of it. And, um, and then also like, make sure you're showing your work, right? Because what's the one thing, if you have this systematic approach, right? You found the problems that you know how to do first, right? You know, problems like maybe, maybe like take a little, um, check mark or a star next to the problem. You're like, Hmm, that one might've been a little confusing. I might've made a mistake there or go back through and check your work there. If you have enough time at the end of your, at the end of your test, then go back through those problems. Look at your work, reread the question, make sure you answered it correctly. Um, from on there. And I think going through all of that, you know, process is just going to ensure that one, you're going to check on those mistakes. And then two, that you're going to be in that optimal form to approach the problem. Because here's one more thing that I want you to remember about taking a test, right? You are a machine. Okay. So you're not going to be, you're not going to be overtaken by anxiety. You're not going to be overtaken by stress. Close your eyes. If you get one of those panic attacks, slow down. Okay. There's going to be problems that you might not know how to do. That is okay. Focus on the problems you know how to do and focus on moving forward. There's going to be problems that you're going to make mistakes on. That is okay. Try to identify as many as they can, right? What is the best thing that we love about, you know, machines and everything else is they're not emotional, right? They don't make mistakes, you know, based on emotion or based on fear or stress or anxiety, right? They make mistakes on not being, of not giving the best input stuff. Now we're human. We're not technically machines, but I want you to try to, um, 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 I want you to try to be like a machine as best as possible taking your test. Avoid everything else that's going around you. Just focus on putting in the best inputs, right? Prepare for your test as best as you can. Um, make sure that you scan and analyze the test. Do the problems you know how to do first, right? And then also make sure you're reading through the questions, showing your work, and then uh, you know checking your answers at the end. And if you follow those steps, I think you're going to be successful for your test. I wish you guys the absolute best on your tests and your exams. And now it is time for me.